single identities. Okay, this one's a bit simpler. <laughs> Let's take a look. All right, so we want to show that cosine 8 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared 4 theta, which looks crazy. But look here, I have a 4 theta and 8 theta that I'm comparing. Notice 2 times 4 is 8. So maybe I could rewrite this as cosine of 2 times 4 theta, right? 2 times 4 would put me right back at 8 theta. So I have cosine of 2 of some kind of angle. Well, cosine of 2 of any angle can be either cosine squared minus sine squared, or it can be either of these down here. Well, notice I want it to be equal to something with a sine squared in it, so I'm going to use this identity right here. When I break that down, it's 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta, which is the angle that I had multiplied by 2. Okay, That's my angle I multiplied by 2, and in this case, the angle I had multiplied by 2 was 4 theta. Huh, in one step, really, we've already proven the identity, okay? Because notice here, 1 minus 2 sine squared 4 theta, 1 minus 2 sine squared 4 theta. All right, so here is another identity we're going to take a look at. Again, I know I'm probably going to use double angles because I have a double angle right here. I could maybe use either sum um, or double angle. I'm going to use double angle since that's what we're working on now. So I do have cosine 2 theta, and it's cosine 2 theta squared, which, remember, means to take something times itself. So that's cosine 2 theta times cosine 2 theta. I want to show that that equals this entire left-hand side. Well, the thing with cosine, again, is that you have options for cosine 2 theta. It could either be cosine squared minus sine squared, it could be 2 cosine squared minus 1, or it could be 1 minus 2 sine squared. They're all, the, they're all equivalent. Okay, So let's look at what we have over here and decide what we might want to use. We have a mixture of sines and cosines. Okay, so we're probably not going to use this one times itself because that wouldn't give us a mixture of sines and cosines. And we're not going to use this one by itself because it also wouldn't give us a mixture of sines and cosines. So what we're going to have what we will have to do because notice we can't we can't use this one by itself either because that would give us a sine to the fourth and wouldn't mix quite as well. So we know we're probably going to have to use this as one of our cosine 2 thetas, so I'll write that down. And you can always try out different combinations and see if they work, okay, but I'm just observing what's happening. If I use this one, notice my first term is supposed to be 2 cosine to the fourth. Well, to get cosine to the fourth, I would have to multiply by another cosine squared. So I'm guessing that the other identity I'm going to use is going to be this one. So it's okay to use two different identities for cosine 2 theta because they really are all equivalent if we were to do our work with them. Okay. All right, so let's FOIL this out and see if we get our left hand or our right hand side like we're supposed to. So we're going to FOIL. So first times the first gives me 2 cosine to the fourth theta. And then cosine squared times negative 1 gives me negative cosine squared theta. Then we do our inner sine squared times 2 cosine squared. <coughs> gives me negative sine squared, don't mess that up, is negative 2 cosine squared sine squared. Right? And finally our last negative sine squared times negative 1 gives me positive sine squared theta, which notice is what I have up here. So again, it didn't take a lot of steps. It just took some foiling and some creative guessing of which cosine two thetas I would be multiplying together. Again, you could try each of them and see if which one gives you the correct result. You could try 
cosine squared minus sine squared and 1 minus 2 sine squared, but you would find that doesn't give you the right results. So you could play around with it, um, but we did come up with the right thing, as ugly as that is.